In today's video, we're going to talk about how your eyes can potentially be lying to you and what you desperately need to do to make sure that's not happening. Now, what I mean by this is there's no doubt that when I meet somebody, whether it's online or face to face, there are a few things that I'm always trying to encourage that student to do. And the big thing that you're always trying to do, and I'm going to elaborate on this during this lesson, is we want to find a way to get a sense of nice hitting across the golf ball, keeping that club face nice and stable so that we can kind of get that feeling of rotating through the ball and kind of minimizing how much hands and arms are, are, are materializing and manipulations happening in the bottom part of that swing. But one of the ways that's going to sort of massively hinder that is very much through your alignment and through your sort of setup position. So what I want to do in this video is talk a little bit about some of the setup things that you really want to be doing that will help you become a better ball striker and a better swinger of the club and then what you need to be careful of when it comes to alignment. So what we know from uh, when we look at professional golf swings and the data is that when they get set up to the golf ball, they often preference having a little bit of weight uh, starting on that lead side. And there's a few reasons for this. So if I use this yellow stick on the floor here to represent my ball position, this would be pretty typical of my setup position. So what this means is my lead foot is slightly flared out, okay? My upper body is slightly more lent over towards my lead side, and my pelvis would be a few degrees open. And the reason for this is that if I put my feet perpendicular and if I sort of squared off my hips and if I sort of got into a position uh, where I was very, very neutral, when my weight was 50-50, I kind of feel really stuck. I feel really sort of closed off to the target. And you've got to remember that, yes, when we get set up to the golf ball, we want to make sure that we're aiming at the target. But you've got to also remember when we hit it, the body's going to be open. So you want to kind of do things in your setup position that makes it more favorable for you to kind of get more down and open through the ball. And that's why I tend to think that we see a lot of those sort of characteristics of pros. Pelvis slightly open, lead foot slightly flared, weight slightly on the lead side, and sternum nice over the ball. Because those are things that make the swing way, way easier that you can do inside your setup position. However, the thing that you've got to be careful of, and this is something that I fall a bit of a trap of myself, is if I went back to a very traditional sort of setup position where my feet would be perpendicular, etc., then obviously it's quite easy to get yourself potentially quite lined up towards the target. What you've got to remember is if you do start flaring your lead foot ever so slightly, all of a sudden the appearance is that your feet are going to be slightly open, but in reality they're not. And that's why sometimes it's better to think about the back of your ankles or your ankle line as opposed to your toe line. Because obviously once you flare that lead foot outwards, it's going to give you that appearance for when you're looking down from your perspective that your feet are going to be more open. So that would be my sort of first thing that you really want to be uh, getting an eye of. Now, the second thing that I always try and do with my students is once we establish this sort of setup position is, like I said to you, I really want to encourage students to strike down on the ball. And one of the big things that I'm always encouraging them to do is to picture like a wall. So if you imagine I was aiming towards that 150 yard marker in the distance, but you know, in, in this teaching bay, I normally use the wall literally over here, but can't quite film from that perspective. So you imagine I drew a big line here that now represented a wall. A lot of amateurs who struggle with backswing and, and downswing sequence and movement, they often end up swinging back in such a way where it just looks like the club is always going to be swinging in towards the wall. And this is why a lot of amateurs kind of get quite flicky and quite scoopy, because it's kind of the flick and the scoop that stops you from plowing into the wall. So what you then need to start doing is when you're sort of standing behind the ball, similar to what I would be doing now, I'm really sort of imagining this wall continue all the way up alongside my target, right? And then what that does is when I get set up over any golf shot, I line my club face up with something just in front of me. So my club face is aiming, say, a yard left of that 150. And then position my feet, what will be parallel to that, but will feel slightly open. And then from there, as I look down, I'm picturing that wall. And that means that I'm never going to get caught swinging too much this way and having to get flippy on it. That makes me get the feeling that I'm going to swing up the wall, down and across the wall. And what that kind of does is that gives me that confidence to really strike down on the golf ball like so. So if I hit a couple of shots here, I go through my setup, routine, have a little look down, and then it's really just up, down and across the wall. So that one, good strike, really windy here. Wind held it off that right hand side. But each and every time you see, I can go through that pre-shot routine now where I know club face lined up, feet gonna look that little bit open, weight slightly on that left side. But as I'm looking up at that target, I'm picturing that wall in front of me and I'm just gonna go up, hit down across it. So that golf ball never is starting into that wall. And it just makes transferring what you're working on the golf swing, taking that onto the course, just that way, way easier. Welcome in, I'll see you soon.